All right, you can see it's a little windy today. Hello. Um, one thing I wanted to give you as an option, so one of your options is a non-traditional painting material. Remember, you can choose abstract or non-objective um, or non-traditional. You might be a person that combines them. But I wanted to go ahead and show you a little experiment I'm doing about painting with mud. Um, so again, there are a lot of different materials out there, um, you know, and a lot of them you can look up on YouTube, but I wanted to give you guys a couple of specifics. So what I'm gonna do today, it's a sunny day here. The wind is blowing my supplies already. But I was going to give you a little tutorial about a material that you probably have in your backyard, literally. And it's fairly uh, cheap, takes a little bit of practice, but it's one resource that you have. If you've completely run out of paint, or again, you wanna reinvent the wheel. Nice thing is, once that mud is dry, if you have do have acrylics or you have markers, you can always layer some color into it after the fact. So just keep that in mind. So in terms of supplies, bear with me. We have some really strong afternoon light here. Um, I am going to be using a piece of paper. I actually already had this on hand. It is gessoed. Um, you know, if you're doing this in your sketchbook, your paper is probably going to get a little bit watery and that's okay. I would actually uh, recommend doing this on a separate piece of paper and then taping it in your sketchbook. So again, I'm using paper, but you might, and this is a little bit thicker. I think this is a Stonehenge, so it's a pretty thick printmaking paper. But you can use computer paper, you can use cardboard, you can use pretty much any surface that you have around. I'm also using my sketchbook um, as a surface to paint on, so I'm just gonna attempt to prop my paper up. Um, everything I have in terms of drawing boards or clipboards, those are all at work. So I don't have them with me right now. I'm gonna improv with what I got. I also have, it's not queso, you wish it were queso. Um, this is just a jar of water in case I wanna thin out my uh, mud. I can tell you what I have right now is fairly thick, so. Uh, yeah, it's not cheese, but it's, uh, I'm not even gonna say it's the next best thing. It's water. <laughs> I grabbed a little bit of matte gel as well. Um, so for me, I actually have this and I don't have Elmer's at home. Go figure. You probably have Elmer's lying around and I think you could just as well do that. Uh, most of you, some of you might have gel, but, um, Elmer's glue would be fine for this in terms of a substitute for the gel. I also have some brushes. I have these ones. These are my more cheap brushes, we'll call them. Um, I don't wanna rush out and ruin all my long handle brushes by doing an experiment with mud. So again, I just grabbed a couple. I have, if I can get this correct here. I have this angled brush, so you can see it right here. Um, that's what I'm using, and then I have this flat head brush here that's a little thinner. It'll give me hopefully some details. I have a spoon. I'm gonna use that to mix my water in with my mud. I have a pencil. I'm going to use this to um, do my sketching. Nothing new there. I have Q-tips. So again, if you're out of brushes, you don't have any at home, you could use Q-tips. Um, I also have lots of like sticks and vines laying around. So that's literally from this little area right here, that's another thing you could use. And then lastly, I have my dirt or my, this is literally already mud. Um, I have lots of this in my backyard. I just shoveled up a little bit. Um, this actually is damp already. So I have a nice layer. You can see it's a uh, clumps. It feels like Play-Doh. It actually has a consistency of Play-Doh right now if I squish it around. Um, so this will be a nice, um, place to start when I add my water. So that's everything that I have. And I've set myself up here. Um, you know, I'm outside, I have my view. Um, and so I'm going to attempt to start by sketching. Okay, so I went ahead and I did a just really brief, um, really sketchy sketch gesture, if you will. Um, I think you guys can see this okay. So I just laid some groundwork for myself. Um, you know, again, I anticipate doing some more here, but I didn't want to get very detailed um, before I started putting things down. I just wanted to give myself an idea of where I might need to work. So now I have that done. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start by 
taking a little bit of water or you know belated belated queso here um a little bit of my dirt i'm gonna mix it on this plate um i'm gonna go ahead and try to do this on this side so you can see it against the white you can see it's a really thick uh, material right now and i'm gonna go ahead and add just a spoonful of water this is something i'm gonna have to play around with the consistency um of it's starting to look like well depending on how you look at it, it starts to look a little like poop or it starts to look a little like brownie batter or either or and i'm just trying to get it to a consistency where i can spread it i'm gonna just put a little tiny 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 bit more water in not much and you can see now i have this really nice um paint like quality i don't know if you guys let me show you so you can see it it's it's liquidy but it's still definitely a solid material so i'm going to take that material i'm going to find my brush and i'm going to start laying in again sorry for the the quality here guys this is literally shot on the ground and i'm going to take my paintbrush and i'm going to start to put some mud on the on the paper and I'm trying to make sure so one thing that we're all guilty of at one point or another is not giving that background enough attention so I'm trying oh look at that can see that there's actually like this is impasto mud and I just I just dipped my paintbrush in a little bit of water so I can drag out some thinner areas you don't want to get this like really dense all at once you want to get some areas of light and dark um, so you don't want to get carried away right off the bat you want to do some underpainting first remember underpainting is that very first thin layer of paint man this is actually like much more thrilling <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. And I'm just going in again and I'm trying to give myself something to work with here. And you're not going to be able to do this all at once. I'm trying to add a little bit of mud, mud shadow, if you will. Um, and I'm actually looking at the ground, like, uh, sorry, I'm actually looking at my source is what I meant to say. Like, oh, Heather, you're looking at the ground. Good job. I know. It's, uh, it's been a struggle, you guys. So when I start to find myself getting areas that are really dark, I say, okay, stop, put in some under, put in some big areas of, I want to say color, but put some big areas of mud in here. Get involved. And the more water you add, the thinner it gets. The less water you add, the thicker it is. So you can see I'm starting to attempt to get a few areas in. Not all, but a few. And, <laughs> whoops, you can see, I'm going to just put my palette down so you can start to see, again, I'm trying to just push a relatively fine layer all across the page. And I'm trying to pay attention to some value. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Um, especially where I start to see some more shadow. That's again where I'll come in with that thicker mud. But the nice thing about this, one of the nice things, is that I can build up layers. And I can still retain those brush marks.
So I don't want to get too carried away yet. work doesn't say this to me starts to feel almost like a mixture between a watercolor and um, acrylic just because of the consistency of everything but I at least for the most part have a nice layer down um, I'm trying to squint with my eyes have some really dark shadow spaces here I'm trying to I'm kind of cute it get some of those lighter, lighter areas. And I can come back in as I need to with my paintbrush. I'm actually gonna put that, I'm um, I'm rinsing it out like I would if it was paint in between. Um, you know, again, you just want to try and take care of your materials. And I'm going to come in and start to use a combination of Q-tips and my smaller flat brush. And I try not to change position too much, but start to do this. I'm trying to find the spaces where um, my background is darker, which is what's causing those petals to pop. And I can feel that I'm starting to hit a point where I'm probably going to have to let some of this dry before I can move on. I'm coming with a pretty light brush, pretty light value, and I have a bunch of water for this. And just add in a base here. Actually, I don't know if you can see this. But in addition to the mud, the water is actually grabbing my graphite. So, that might be a tool that I use. Um, like, let's put some pencil down. Let's try here. And this is just a mechanical pencil. It's just like a regular pencil that I'm using right here. And I'm going to try and put another line down here to attempt to define my space. Yep. So I can use that mud, but then when something isn't reading the way I want to, I don't want to rely on it too much, um, I can come in and draw using some of that graphite. Oof. and use that to also start to create a space. You can see I'm just kind of adding some water as I as I blend it, as it adds water. So, you know, this isn't something I'm starting to get a little dimension there. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm sorry about my camera angles. Um, and one thing I'm trying to watch myself do, or not do, is that I get really hung up. Remember, we don't want to spend all our time on one area of the composition. You can see how this form is starting to get more developed, which is okay for the moment, but I don't want to spend all my time on one little area. So, again... It's a really dark um, shadow here, which needs to get spread out.
So you can see, hopefully, the more I do this, the more I start to develop different systems for myself. And I don't want to, if I start to use a graphite, I'm going to come out here. And again, I'm looking at the shadow shapes that are by me on the ground. And I'm trying to add and blend those in. So when I use a material, this isn't always, you know, again, it's not a universal truth here, but I like to bring some of that color of the graphite into the background if I'm using it in the foreground as well. And what I've now noticed is that I wish I had more of that brown in that form. So I come back and I'm gonna add some brown to warm it up a little bit. And I'm pushing with my water in my brown to make that start to read a little bit more like a three-dimensional form. And the same thing over here. Because I can use the white on the paper to my advantage to, to make things feel like they have more space. And I like this color. I like what's starting to naturally happen as the mud and the graphite work together. Okay, so that's first step. I can feel my mud is starting to dry. It's a nice day out. It's drying pretty quickly. Maybe add some darker tones here. And as you can see, so now I'm starting to add mud on top of areas that's already dry. And because I'm doing that, I'm starting to get a greater value here. And I got this little, this little flower over here. It doesn't really have much going on. So I can start to put kind of a middle, a middle value almost in this top corner. And I'm noticing that as I do this, my mud is starting to dry. <laughs> Which makes sense, it's exposed to the sun. Oh, I just got a like giant impasto blob. Um, but it makes sense because it's being exposed to the sun and that's okay, I just have to add more water as my mud starts to dry. So, um, you know, again, this is not gonna be something that I just immediately become a master at. Although, you know, I know. I'm the best, you don't have to tell me twice. Um, But every layer I add starts to give me a little bit more dimension. Like right back here, this area is pretty dark if I'm looking at my actual form. So I'm adding some darker elements back here. And what actually, I'm gonna take my Q-tip and dip it in a little bit of water. It's getting pretty muddy, but hey, you know, it is what it is. And I'm gonna try and see if I can add, like I have a leaf form here. I don't wanna add like the detail of a leaf, but I wanna get the idea down um, that there's other foliage happening in this besides the stuff I've drawn. 
And you'll notice, like if you start to work with a Q-tip, um, it gets kind of crazy because it's such a broad surface. But now I'm working subtractively, meaning I'm taking away from my surface. And I can start to add in maybe a little bit of value again. This is a dry Q-tip. I'm literally sham wowing or scrubbing away. Let's see, I don't know. Can you see? <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. I'm taking away the dirt to bring in areas of value. So again, subtractive method here. And I like what's happening. Um, um, I might start to try and add a little, just a little, I don't want to define this too much, but add a little bit of definition with that pencil mark. A little bit of shadow with that pencil mark. Maybe I add a little bit of line. So you can start to see, and I could blend it in or I could leave it alone, I'm not sure yet. Um, this is a nice little scrub right here. Uh, the, the very technical term that I'm using, again, if I wanna add some more shadow, I'm coming in with my pencil and adding some shadow there. Okay, so, I have a form here that is primarily mud with a little bit of graphite on top. This one is primarily graphite. I think I might come back in and try and add some here. And then I have two forms here, um, as well as this background that I'd like to change a little bit of. So again, I'm gonna add, add some mud. Look at that value that we're getting there. Look at that rich color, you know. We're just, we're embracing this. And I actually haven't added any medium to this. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, I'm finding actually the consistency of this is just fine. <laughs> it doesn't feel um, super finicky right now. I mean, it's, it's difficult because it's mud and I'm painting with it, but it's not, I'm not having issues where I feel like it's not holding together well. Um, and number two, sorry, I got caught up in this little area. I am hesitant unless I know I want an impasto effect, but I'll go ahead and show you that. Um, to add that gel to it if I don't absolutely need it. So um, again, some of this you guys are gonna have to figure out on your own. I'm just keep adding and subtracting mud. There's a nice little kind of blob down here. All right, let's go ahead and there's these two flower forms. One of them, the petal is just like, we've gone rogue here. Uh, so I'm going to erase, and I'm not really erasing, I'm just taking a Q-tip and I added a little bit of water to try and get some of that paper back there's something here again i've taken my water and i'm going to take a little bit of my q-tip and i'm gonna a little bit more of a gestural oof, look and i'm starting to lose some of my flower shape which is not the end of the world but i'm trying to come back with some water and i've noticed that this clump is too dark here so i'm gonna patch it up a little then i'm gonna take a dry q-tip and i'm going to there we go like add some so there's a little bit of value but nothing like that dark clump we had. Okay. I'm 
I'm just adding some some mud here because ultimately ultimately this flower is lighter than the rest of the piece. But I wanted to give myself something to subtract from. definition here and I'm just looking at my flower to try and find I'm not trying to outline it um, I'm working on those edges I'm actually finding that's way too dark so I'm gonna there we go I'm not trying to make those edges outline because that's a good way to flatten my space, but I am trying to give it something to push against so it feels like it has some dimension. And actually, a fun thing I'm discovering is that as the mud dries, you carve into it with a pencil it becomes uh, almost like a pastel of sorts because it's it's pushing again against that dry mud. It's removing that um, from there. And I'm just embracing, trusting the process, guys, right? As uh, if we were there in person, I would be saying to you right now. And there's a nice, like, uh, there's a nice leaf form that's under here that I'm just drawing in. And I'm going to add a little bit of, possibly, ooh, a little bit of mud. And I'm going to then remove again. what's happening is that I need to let this dry. So I'm going to let this dry for a second. I'm going to add a little bit of water here. And I'd like to add a little bit of um, Right now that just felt like, it, like nothing was happening there. Again, I'm adding some blobs in. Add some blobs in over here. And you can see when it's wet. It really uh, dilutes, sorry, it really darkens the color. And then when it's dry, and you can see how much darker or lighter that some of those browns start to get. One more little area and then I can keep going. So this little section over here, again, what I'm trying to do, I'm just using my brush, a little bit of that water, so I'm just adding a little bit of that color down. So right now it's blending in. And then what I'm doing is I'm coming in with a Q-tip, like right here. And if it's not scrubbing off like it is right here, I need a clean one. And that will remove the color that I don't necessarily want or need right there. So I'm going to come in and add just a little bit of that white right there. I'm going to come in and add a little bit of gray. And by gray, I mean dirt. I'm thinking about pencil lead. There we go. 
I'm starting to look at the forms a little bit better. So you can see it starts to turn into almost a lost and found. Um, let's go ahead. And one thing I said is that I was going to take my mud palette and I'm going to take a clean spoon. I don't want to contaminate here. I'm going to open my gel up. And this area needs some more pencil, but that's okay. I'm going to add just a small amount. This is my spoon here. Um, I get you in the camera. Um, because, again, this isn't something I've done tons of. And I want to make sure that uh, usually with my materials a little bit goes a long way. So I'm closing the lid back up because I don't want it to dry out. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to mix a little bit of that mud. Ooh, just had a bug fly into my face. That's what working outside does to you. I'm going to take a little bit of that and mix it with my mat. So again, you could try doing this with Elmer's. Just make sure you're washing your brushes out. Um, really, 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 really well if these are ones that you're using at home um, for, I mean, like ones you're using in other paintings because Elmer's is going to kill your brushes. If you have like cheaper craft brushes, I would do that or try the Q-tips um, because that's going to make it, I think, a little bit better. So now I've, I've mixed in some mud with my medium. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah. So this actually, um, transforms my mud a little bit more and this does make it a little bit easier to direct because you have um this is a little bit smoother of a surface so i'm trying to see areas of shadow that i can put down um, now this is going to take longer to dry I'm trying really hard to vary my stroke, vary where I'm putting things. Um, and I'm just kind of putting some general, general marks in at the moment. I can always come back and fix things. But I'm kind of, I'm, I'm having some fun here, you know? Um, this is not something that I do every day. And so I'm gonna keep going. Oh, there's just like a nice little mark right there. I don't wanna overdo it. So there's all kinds of painters slash artists. And I can see this area, like the in the outside of this. This one is in pretty good light. So I'm coming in and actually I'm actually trying to add some shadow to that background that I had right there. So, dun, 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 that's that one there. And then there's a little guy right here. And then this is that under part. So there's actually like a stem that goes here. So I might, again, I might leave some of that, but I might come in with my brush and try and blend it in a little to the background. I'm 
going to let this um, sit for a little bit. I'm going to let it dry and then I might come in and just add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of acrylic um, on top of it. But you know, um, I'm actually pretty happy with this for an experiment and uh, I'll just show you again in a second what would happen if I wanted to take this one step further and add just a couple touches of color to it.